we're back, and guess who's joining us? Former LSU swimmer, 10-time gold medalist, and big brother runner-up, Matt Klotz. Now, we don't have a big brother house in Baton Rouge, but we have Surge, so we're going to go in, do an interview, and play some games. Let's get it. All right, you better be looking around for games. You better be, you're right, you're right. I should be looking around. I got the card. I got the card. We're ready to go. All ready right. To go. Now this is an interview too. You know that, right? Like you're, we're not just playing games. Oh, I know, I know. We're doing both, both in one. All right. While we're looking for games though, how's it feel to be back in Baton Rouge? It feels good. Uh, Especially after like being away for like 115 days. It's 100 days, but we're also sequestered for 15 days before the show. So you're like, it's a third of a year. Um, no so, contact with the outside world? No, nothing. Phone's taken away, everything. So like, you don't know what's going on in the outside world. Like, I remember I was talking about Hawaii the whole time on the show and people were like, Matt has no idea because there was a fire in Hawaii. So I had no idea. I didn't find that out till November 11th when I got out. Yeah, so it's like wild, right? That's crazy. Can you imagine being stuck in a house for 115 days, no contact with the outside? That would actually might be kind of nice, to be honest. It is. It's refreshing. You don't have to deal with that phone every day when you wake up. All right, um, we're going to start with basketball. We're going to start with basketball. You want to go first or you want me to go first? Oh, it's not the same time. Okay, you go first. I guess we could go at the same time. Swipe it. Swipe. Yeah. If y'all seen the Anissa Moro interview, y'all know I'm not great at basketball, but I've gotten better. I've gotten better. All right, you ready? Uh, no. Hit it. Oh. <laughs> oh my God, dude. I just airballed that. No, what? I might get a win. Maybe. Go in. The balls are too slow. Dude, I'm so bad at this. Uh, I think it's just excuses. You're moving kind of slow. I don't think I'm doing that good either, though. I just gotta pretend my life's on the line again. Dude, how do you handle this kind of pressure in the house, though? Like, you face this type of pressure. Oh. That was so bad. That was so bad. Okay, so you've obviously faced this. There you go. All right. One, one for Matt, zero for Abby. Did you see the comp? Did you see the comp? Whenever you're like getting ready for a challenge like this in the house, like, do you feel a kind of pressure? Like, how was that being on TV and competing? Yeah, yeah. I mean, I know like, if you suck on a challenge, everyone's gonna see that. But you kind of get used to just being on the cameras. Um, mine, when I just go into it, it depends how I feel that week. Like. If you feel like you're on the chopping block, there's a lot of pressure on that competition because you're like, I have to win this or I might be gone. I was in a very comfortable position, I would say, for m most of the time. Uh, so I kind of just had fun with them because I knew every competition I went, it's more blood on my hands. So I didn't really want to get the wins, but I had fun with them. I was still nervous, obviously, but there wasn't like that, that feeling where you feel like your life's on the line, you got to go all out. So I never had that drive like I do with like swimming and all that. Of swimming, how would you say that being a swimmer at LSU kind of prepared you for Big Brother? Did it? Yeah, yeah like in a lot of aspects. I mean, like, I mean, just like the engagement, social engagement, you know, being an athlete, meeting people from all over the country and uh, all over the world, even. Um, that brought a lot of uh, kind of just being used to meeting people right out of nowhere because that's what just being an athlete in general does. Um, also, an LSU athlete, I mean, you guys have the best here. So, so like, you know, there's no other better school. Um, and that just kind of gets you that mindset, you know, like you go in there, you represent. But I always wore my LSU Tiger headband. That had to invert them because you can't have any brands or uh, copyright images and stuff. So I had to invert it, but you can still see them. I was still saying go Tigers on their live evictions. Um, but I, it definitely prepared me. I think being an athlete, especially the mentality of it, because you're in that show, you have no contact from the outside world. Um, you know, you're gonna get broken down in there because you know nothing goes your way. Um, it's a very stressful environment because you can't, you don't know who you can trust. Uh, just being an athlete kind of just made that really easy, though. 
Makes right. sense, right? You kind of had a little bit, bit of an edge, I would say, right? A little bit. What would you say the hardest challenge was for you in the house? The hardest challenge? Huh, that'd be a good one. The one where you had to listen. Yeah, that was a hard one for me. Okay, well, on a serious note, though, like, how did you navigate that? Because uh, it's a very secretive <laughs> game, right? If you've watched Big Brother, you know there's a lot of whispering and a lot of secrecy yeah, going on. So yeah. you kind of had almost a disadvantage Definitely. in that I, aspect. I don't think I had a lot of disadvantages there. But, like, for me, I was just growing up as an athlete, you know, not everything goes your way. And so, like, that's kind of how I look at it with my disability. It's like, you know, I can't just sit there and complain because that's not going to fix anything. So I just said, I gotta find a way to get past it. I gotta find a way to make it to my advantage, kind of make it like close, you know, just finding the next thing to get there. Uh, maybe I might have guilt tripped it a little bit so people would feel you bad. No one it. wants to vote out the deaf guy. Come on now. You use it. Yeah. Okay. So growing up with that kind of disadvantage, for those of you who don't know, you were the first deaf uh, contestant. Yeah, I was the first deaf contestant. On Big, Big Brother. Brother. So history and freaking came in second. Come on now. What is that? Uh, I think there was a lot to it. You know, I think going into that show, I knew I had a lot of representation. It wasn't just LSU. It just wasn't my family. Uh, it wasn't Baton Rouge. It was like I had the deaf community, the disabled community. So I knew I had to do my best, obviously, to represent and um, kind of like lay the foundation out because there's never been a deaf person. So I knew I was going to face a lot of challenges with that because they weren't 100% prepared. and. I knew that willingly going in because there were challenges they've never faced before and this is obviously challenges I've never faced before. So I went in like totally willing that was knowing that was gonna happen. Yeah, because like that's what happened on that one challenge where they were like, oh shoot. And like there was a really big moment. It's not really talked about, um, but live feeds were cut down for like 11 hours. There was a lot of things that happened when that, that challenge happened. Um, I have a mutual respect with CBS and all that because we had a long talk about this stuff. Um, so we like just kind of got together about it, talked about what happened, what can change, how can we do better, and we moved on from there. And it was a really big moment. Obviously, they you didn't you can't see it because that wasn't shown. Um, but it was a, I think a really big moment that made it move forward. Yeah, for yeah. sure. I mean, you've got representation there, and you're able to kind of use your situation and your platform to kind of change the the landscape of freaking reality tv yeah. so that's really cool yeah. and you're a big part of that all right we're gonna keep moving keep moving i know big brother is like the talk right now but you were a swimmer a very accomplished yeah. swimmer so what do you plan on swimming like what's yeah. what's the deal there's right now it's being realistic like i was just had a third of a year off so olympics i gotta qualify in a month I just had 115 days off. I'm not, I'm opting out, I, sadly. That was the sacrifice I took of being on Big Brother and not. If I wasn't gonna make jury, I was gonna fully train for Olympics, but if I made jury, I knew I, when you're in jury, you go all the way to the end. So I knew if I make jury, I'm probably gonna have to give up Olympics just because the training isn't there because I'm cut off from training. What, yeah. How were you able to make that decision when it came down to it, knowing that, hey, if I go all the way through with Big Brother, I'm not gonna try to qualify for the Olympics? Yeah, it, it was hard. I mean, because I knew when that, that stage with jury was happening, I was like, okay, if I make it to jury, and like when I found out jury, I was like, oh, okay, I'm in here for 100 days. Like, and then I knew right away that means probably not going to Olympics now. It was hard, but I also knew I was doing something else outside of swimming for the deaf community, and that was like representing. And that's why that's what kind of got me through that because I love swimming my whole life, but I also went on there to represent and knowing that I was going to be on Big Brother for all the way. 100 days was kind of like the sacrifice I was willing to take. Yeah. Purpose. You have a platform, you use it. So do you plan on going back to swimming or like, I know yeah. you're first off, I want everyone to know how kind he was because I hit him in November. Yeah. I hit him in November about doing an interview like right after Big Brother and he's been traveling for months yeah, and he time. hit me back and was like, yo, I still want to do this. So appreciate that. But how has the traveling been? And like, you're all over the place. Yeah, yeah. And like, I go to Detroit soon. Uh, I'm just like all over, yeah. Um, and I hate flying too. So I'm like, I hate the traveling part, but going places is cool. Um, but yeah, it's been really cool doing all that stuff. Um, I mean, I already travel for swimming, but this time I actually get to enjoy the traveling. Cause usually I gotta like 
rest and recover, stay at the hotel only. But this time I actually get to go see the city, go see stuff, do stuff. So it's been really cool getting that experience. That's sick. You are literally like, I've seen you in suites at games and you just got a new house, huh? The what? Did you get a new house? Yeah, in Houston. How many houses do you have now? How many houses? I, I, I mean, I move out of all of them. Like, I'm moving out of the Baton Rouge one right now. So I guess I just have uh, Georgia and um, Georgia and Houston now. Georgia and yeah. Houston. Yeah. And you're all over the country. There's a game over here that I really want to play. So we're going to move back this way. Sorry, I made you walk over here for nothing. She just wants to play it so she can beat me. I'm down right now. I'm 0-1. I, I got to get back. We're gonna play a game I know I'm good at too. That's how you do it. Okay, so going back to swimming, like, do you have any long-term, like, do you yeah. wanna keep doing it or like? So, do you have the card? Oh, I thought I handed it back to you. Uh, not not no, us losing the card, okay. Uh, no, it's broken. Uh, is no. It? Yeah. I'm screwed. I'm not gonna win a game. What do I do? We need another game I'm good at. Okay, we'll do that. We can say we'll do that. Okay, so yeah, swimming. Uh, for, for, yeah, long-term swimming. Uh, I plan on going to Tokyo next summer for, I know, right, Tokyo, uh, for Devon Olympics, because, oh wait, yeah, so I, I get so sidetracked. Um, right, right. Oh wait, wait, yeah. You're good, I'm not. Ah, there we go. Oh, no. All right, pause on the conversation. I have to focus. Wait, what's that? Ready? Oh, no. Shoot! Shoot the thing! No, what? Oh! Uh, Wait, you got a head start. Okay, this is. This is, uh, is kind of easy. You started before me. Shoot. I, 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 and the disqualification. Oh, baby. Oh, baby. All right, we're one and one. We're one and one. We're even now. Camera saw that. You cheat. Okay, so back to the swimming. Tokyo. Yeah, so I'm gonna do that. Um, right now, I hold 22 medals uh, for Devon Olympics, and the like history of the most medals ever in the games is uh, 32. So I'm gonna go for Tokyo. I want to break that one. I got 14 of the last one in Brazil, and that broke the single most medal in the in a single games. And now I want to go for like all time. Yeah, I just want to get that last one. Yeah. How is your support system? Like, knowing that you're bouncing around and you're being, like, you're succeeding in multiple avenues, right? Reality TV, swimming, like, talk about your support system for this. Uh, yeah, I mean, I, obviously my parents, like, they won. They do everything for me. They, you know, they've taken care of me, taken me to practices. I mean, when we go way back to elementary, middle school, high school, they made sure I was successful in every way. And they continue to, because I mean, when COVID hit, actually, a lot of things went sideways. I actually moved back home. They took care of me. Um, and then I got myself back on my feet, came back out here, started training again. Uh, the new coaching staff here at LSU, phenomenal, best thing ever. Uh, they treat me like family. And like the new head coach was from Michigan. Um, he had no obligations to train me because he, I was never under his belt. And I've already graduated. But he was like, I want to train you. He took the risk. and all-time favorite uh, coach and yeah they, they've been so great uh, obviously my friends like they won everywhere I mean they were, I wouldn't come back to Baton Rouge if I didn't like if I didn't love my friends and my people you know so I, I have the best support system for sure that's incredible I, I, when you're doing stuff like that I feel like it's hard to keep up with family and friends yeah. and stuff because oh, you're yeah, busy for busy sure. busy Sure. Um, but to have them kind of, especially the swimming coach, like take yeah. you under his wing and kind of keep yeah. going with you. Because yeah. I mean, he, he knew my past. He's like, I know you're a partier. And I'm right. like, no. <laughs> and so like, you know, we, he, he said, as long as you do the training, you lead this team, I want you here. And I'm like, okay, I'll do that. I promise. Yeah. So it was really cool. Okay. So you have a platform now, a pretty big one and it grows. I heard uh, you went to the gym meet the other day. Yeah. The gymnastics yeah. meet. Do you get stopped a lot? Like, do people oh, okay. recognize yeah, you? I mean, yeah, I was with um, Jim and his daughter when we were walking down to the seat, but like, you know, still get stopped. Um, like, is that high. different for you? Like, how do you, how have yeah, you adjusted you know, to I that? Think swimming, you don't get that publicity like, you know, football, baseball does. Um, 
So with the the show, obviously, it's been a lot different in the public's eye. Um, it's kind of weird too, because it's like you know, I show up, and I'm like, no one's gonna see, no one's gonna recognize me, like, no one knows, like, and then I'm like, oh my god, like, people just constantly come up, and I'm just like, geez, like, and it doesn't bother me, but it's just like, I don't get used to that still, so, like, yeah, it's just like kind of wild. But do you remember the first time you got stopped in public? It was LA. We were at a random, really bougie hotel in LA, and this old guy just dressed up in a suit, just comes up to me, shakes my hand. He's like, I love you, I'm big brother. I was like, what? It's just weird, because especially in LA, like there's so many celebrities in LA. Um, but because I was in LA for a week after, um, and you still get a lot in LA, but then when I came to Baton Rouge, that was definitely, um, it was the game after Florida, um, because Florida was happening the day I got out. And when I came to that, that second last football game, I came here and I was like, oh my God, like, and the, and the uh, tailgating, the tailgating, everyone was just like, Matty Ice, and I was like, hey, yeah. That's really cool, though. I'm sure sometimes it's like, all right, guys, like, let me live. But I think that's really cool that, like, and again, you have a platform now. So, yeah. like, you're able to kind of use it, whether you want it to be for the deaf community and, and kind of navigating that and moving that or anything else. Right, um, right. So we're going to play one more game, but I do want to ask you, Ooh, dodgeball, ADHD. Let's go play that. This looks fun. Oh, dodgeball. All right, how do we play this? Do you jump in there and then I go for you? I don't, think, <laughs> that's how that works. I th I don't think that's how that works. All right, two player. Wait. Did I swipe it right? No. I assume you just hit as many targets as you want. Oh, don't hit yellow. Wait, is it going? I'm bad at this. It didn't work. Oh. Try this one. Maybe you'll have better luck. Welcome to the Dodgeball I did the same thing. I did the same thing. No, 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 swipe it again, swipe it. We're gonna go at the same time. All right, ready? I don't know. Oh, come on, dude. You hit the red targets. Wait, where? Oh, I hit yours. Done. Oh. I was hitting blue. Wait. Do it again. His Wait, excuse. I, I was hitting blue. You were hitting. Yeah, you're red. Let's do it again. Swipe. Wait, do I? I kind of threw that one. Yeah, I have it. I was hitting blue the whole time. Oh, that's why my score was so high. <laughs> I didn't look. I just went right into it. I'm kind of out of breath. I'm not gonna lie. Huh. All right, I don't have the stamina of a swimmer. Woo! All right. Welcome to the Dodgeball Ultimate Arena. Bonus. We should have looked at this first. Did it go? No, because it's not blinking this one yet. It wasn't blinking. Uh, I am red now. Round one. Oh, damn. Oh. Oh, jeez. Stop stealing the balls! Oh! I got it in! I'm gonna keep going for those. No! No! Oh! Alright, you got me on that one. All right, we'll wrap up because I know you have places to be, but you have a platform. You obviously have a purpose. How do you want to use that moving forward? Um, honestly, just kind of keep going the same direction I am. Um, 
I really want to go on more, more reality TV. Um, like what? Do you have any specific show? I would love to do the challenge. The challenge. That would be a good one because like they got the social game and then also the challenge is more physical uh, competition. You know, Big Brother, you have that mix where you have a little bit of physical, but you got a lot of ones where you're doing true or false and all that. So the challenge would be a really good one to do. Um, I've always loved Survivor growing up, but I don't know if I want to do that. Well, if, I mean, if they ask, then yeah, but I would do that. Challenge for sure. I think um, Amazing Race, maybe. Fit all of those. That yeah. makes so much sense. But, okay, so in five years, where do you want to be? Whether it's TV, swimming, just personal, where do you want to be in five years? Hopefully I'm done with swimming. I've been doing that way too long now. Um, yeah, I think I just want to keep doing that because I think, I guess not directly be a motivational speaker, but I want to like keep advocating for the deaf community because I didn't realize how much of an impact it would have had until I got off the show and I had like thousands of people that are deaf or their parents or their, their parents, their kids are deaf and they messaged me how much I like helped them kind of realize to like kind of throw themselves out there shoot for your goals like don't set yourself back because that was something i always like said is like your biggest enemy is yourself and if you look at yourself having a disadvantage because you're disabled like you already lose so you have to be like no like i can't change it so like you can't do anything about it then you move on and then you just focus on what you can change whether it be kids that struggle with god knows what the adversity or they're deaf or have another disability but they want to get to where you are yeah. what would you tell them honestly literally as corny as it sounds please shoot for the stars because like you're gonna go so much farther than you, you expect like even if i sh shoot for the moon you land across the stars so, like you got farther than you would have because you just threw it out there because if you don't throw yourself out there you're not going to get very far and you just have to trust yourself because at the end of the day the, the person that's going to trust you the most and believe in yourself the most is you you know um so i think that's it my job that was easy i did win i just want to remind everyone that i beat the, the runner-up she the cheated, cheated. You cheated. Cheat. i did cheat but it doesn't matter i won there we go oh i think it just went like boom into your shoulder you were great seriously we're good